We're going to start this puppy up. Clear? Prop? And welcome back to Tip of the Week. For those of you who thought autopilot systems for your home built were out of the question, I want to show you a design from X-Flight. We have the designer of X-Flight here today, Steve Massel. What makes this autopilot special is that it is affordable, way less than $1,000 complete and simple to install and operate and has no prerequisite avionics. In other words, you don't need a Garmin or Dynon system to make this thing go. This autopilot uses open source software and off-the-shelf hardware to keep the price down. It uses high torque servo motors that are standard, inexpensive. The autopilot is designed to control pitch and roll by way of secondary flight controls. For example, your trim, a trim tab. This is important because the autopilot does not control the primary surfaces, which means it can never take control of your aircraft like other systems can. So think of this in terms of safety. You always have control. But before we get started, I'm going to have Steve show us his beautiful Hummel H5 aircraft. This is a beautiful all-metal kit, single place, from the Hummel family of aircraft. Let's take a look. Hummel Aircraft makes three models of metal kit planes. There's the Hummel Bird, the Ultra Cruiser, which is their ultralight, and the H5, their largest plane. You can get more information about Hummels at flyhummel.com. Hi, my name is Steve Massel. I'm the owner of X-Flight Technologies, and this is my Hummel H5 uh, kit plane, which I built about two years ago now. Um, as you can see, it's a single engine, 85 horsepower. Uh, it took me about a year to build it, pretty much full time. Um, and if you want to look at the hours, it was 500 hours to build the kit itself, and 600 hours if you include all the electrics, um, the instrument panel and the paintwork. It's good fun to fly, it's got a lot of power for the size of it. Um, that power plant is pretty good, it's a dual ignition as well. It has the primary ignition here at the top and underneath there's uh, the electronic ignition. Uh, as you can see it's um, with the optional tri-gear package. Um, these often come as tail gear planes uh, but I preferred the tri-gear. Yep, it's pretty much predominantly pop riveted, except for a few exceptions uh, where extra strength is needed with solid rivets. Um, but other than that, it's, it's very easy to build. Uh, most of the skins came pre-drilled. Um, as you can see, there's also the optional wing tanks. Uh, the header tank here, which is gravity fed, has nine gallons. And the wing tanks um, add uh, another six gallons each. So there's a total of 21 gallons, uh, which is gives it a pretty good range. Um, you can see the um, what's normally would be flaps uh, inboard there. I've actually converted them to be secondary ailerons um, and that's what I use for the roll control for the autopilot uh, which we can talk about later. Um, and at the back um, you can also see a trim tab and that can be used for manual trim or again, you know, you can connect it to an autopilot to control uh, pitch and uh, altitude. I've added some niceties like beacon lights, navigation lights as well. And uh, yeah, it's great fun to fly. It's uh, pretty fast. It'll do about 110, 120 miles per hour in the cruise. Uh, approach is around about 60 miles per hour approach and it stalls at a pretty slow 42 miles an hour so um, it's pretty easy to handle and it's very stable in the air. 
that's the inside and you can see I uh, installed the instrument panel there put a few instruments in and the autopilot is front and center there all the controls are um, push-pull tube uh, control so there's no uh, wire anywhere for uh, control yes this is light sport that's right yep well I, to be honest I haven't tried the full speed I mean the V&E is uh, 150 um, I've only really gone to about 120 so far um, I've only done 50 hours on it so far since the certificate of, um, of uh, airworthiness was issued okay so um, over the last year or so um, I've been developing an autopilot I found that the traditional autopilots on the market for experimental aircraft are just prohibitively expensive um, I mean they're good and they do a good job um, but I think typically they're aimed at larger aircraft and so I was seeing what was going on in the drone market and uh, these little drones that you think would be difficult to control are all automatically controlled to a really high precision level and so I took that technology basically the Ardu pilot technology and transformed it into something that can be used on um, slightly larger planes like uh, experimental and ultralight um, and they're very it's very easy to use um, you basically have a little screen which uh, I can show you later um, that allows you to either have manual trim uh, which is what you normally would do uh, perhaps on uh, switches on your stick or you can go into one of the flight modes um, one mode is stability which basically keeps your wings level another mode is cruise control uh, which keeps you at your current height on your current heading another mode is navigation mode uh, where it actually links to an Ardu plane or an Ardu pilot app on your uh, iPhone or iPad or Google device and it allows you to fly a mission that you've preset on that device and you can change that in flight as well so it makes navigation very easy uh, and you also have a return to home function where you can just click a, you know, tap a button on the screen and it takes you back onto the home vector and shows you how far away you are from home uh, all automatically so it really helps out um, you know especially for the single pilot who's doing everything on their own okay yeah the actuation is very straightforward um, it's intended to be used with trim tabs which means that the pilot always has full control of the aircraft and that's also what differentiates it from the larger autopilots that control flight surfaces directly in this case I've implemented it here um, on secondary control surfaces. These are usually flaps on the H5, but I've converted them to secondary ailerons. And so these will obviously go up and down to automatically control roll. And then on the back, um, for pitch, I've, I've gone just for the trim tab. So again, this can be just manual trim, or the autopilot will control that. And if you look underneath, it's really just a large radio-controlled plane linkage um, and the servos are, are very small and lightweight and the servos are typically less than hundred dollars and the autopilot itself which you see there these are the servos for the secondary control surfaces which are slightly bigger because um, I'm not actuating trim tabs for those uh, but again they're only about a hundred bucks each and the autopilot is uh, only four hundred and fifty dollars so it really puts um, autopilot and navigation functionality in the hands of the small builder because they don't have to now you know look at the uh, bespoke products from the big manufacturers um, you can see the AHRS display there with um, miles per hour ground speed up there altitude up there this is the distance from the home location this would be the track to home location and this is current track now the, uh, there are three modes to the autopilot um, first of all switch it on Stability um, is a wings level mode and keeps the wings straight and level. Cruise mode keeps you on your current track and maintains altitude as well. And then the home setting steers you onto um, the home vector. Uh, so this is the home vector and this is your current track and so you'd be tracking towards the home vector right now. And um, it has a configurable maximum bank angle to get you there. Also you've got a status in the middle there that tells you the status of the flight controller and um, whether you're uh, in the home location or not. 
when you're within two miles of the home location then this will start flashing and the autopilot will maintain you in a loiter circle around the home location until you disengage the autopilot. So it's uh, very easy to use. Um, this also shows you the number of satellites locked on. Uh, we're in a hangar at the moment but it's showing uh, 18 satellites at the moment. Yeah, this is the flight controller. Uh, this is the mini computer and uh, touch screen. And that's the Sovo, and that's really all there is. Uh, this is the Wi-Fi module. This is how you connect to your uh, mobile device. Um, and that's really all there is to it. It's very straightforward. That is the entire autopilot. That's amazing. Yeah. And there you have it. Now you know a little bit more about an affordable autopilot system you might consider for your aircraft. Sometimes when I fly, I see trees and trees below, and sometimes I get lost. I love the feature on this autopilot that says, go home. With one press of a button, you can sit back, and the aircraft will find where it started from and take you home. You can't beat that. Now, everyone, back to building.